Well, let's talk about this dynamite show here. You know what I thought this show was? I thought it was dynamite. That's what I thought. Well, we had a Brian Danielson, Ethan Page match. I thought this match was great. MGF was in the uh, the box with some dame. I don't know who it was. I'm sure Mike probably knows, but uh, he was uh, just watching the match, scouting old Brian Danielson, and uh, they had a great match, back and forth, beating the hell out of each other. The only thing that surprised me was the finish was uh, Danielson hit the running knee, and then he he put him in the regal stretch. And literally, none of the announcers identified it as a regal stretch. Even though that's a very important part of the story here. And that he's infuriated that MJF killed William Regal. And he's going to take it out on him, apparently by beating him with Regal's finish. So very, very excellent opening match here on Dynamite. And long. And with a hot crowd. My buddy Marcella was there last night. He said, with the exception of the Swerve match on Rampage, which was the last match of the night and everybody was tired, he said the crowd was awesome for all of Dynamite and Rampage. We had a Hangman Page segment. This was actually clever. So coming up next was going to be Moxley and Claudio versus Top Flight. And so Renee is asking uh, Hangman about everything, and Hangman's all angry. And the doctor's there. And the doctor explains to him, you know, brother, Two weeks, you might be cleared to get back in the ring. But if you keep going and brawling with John Moxley, you, you're not going to get better. You may never be able to get back in the ring. So Hangman's like, oh, fine. So he didn't run in. That's how they got over. Uh, they explained him not running in tonight. And he might be back in two weeks. We had Moxley and Claudio beating Top Flight. I love this match. Uh, once again, uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't know really what's going on, but if you watch these matches... And you listen to these John Moxley promos, like the Blackpool Combat Club, especially Moxley and, uh, and to a degree on this show, Claudio, they're total heels. I mean, they're killing these dudes. They're working heel. And then at the end, the big finish was uh, Moxley hits Dante with a paradigm shift on the floor. Uh, and then this referee, by the way, forget this guy's name, but he needs his license revoked. Uh, Claudio, he just, he kills uh, Darius with elbows until Darius is dead. He's like dead. But uh, the referee lets it continue. And then uh, uh, Claudio grabs him and he tosses him in the air and he just absolutely kills this dude with a uh, uppercut and he pins him. And that was the end of these two guys. So uh, very violent finish by the Blackpool Combat Club. We have a segment with Kip Sabian, Penelope, Orange Cassidy, best friends. I don't know what's going on with this Sabian, this box head. But what I do know is that uh, he's talking about eliminating Orange Cassidy. And then Trent says, yeah, well, you know, I eliminated you. So by that, you know, I, sh- I should be getting a title shot against Orange. Orange goes, sounds great. So they've announced on Friday it is going to be Orange Cassidy and, uh, and Trent for the All-Atlantic title. And uh, Kip Sabian says he's going to be keeping an eye on it. We had Hook versus Balaam Leaks, who I think may have come straight from NXT with a name like that. Balaam Leaks. And uh, he got killed. And then the uh, firm comes down. Lee Moriarty, Big Bill. Big Bill! Or as we like to call him here, Big Ass Bill Morrissey comes down. And they go after Hook. Out comes uh, Jungle Boy to make the save. So it looks like we got a tag match coming up there. Chris Jericho tells uh, Action Andretti to get back to the Indies. Don't come back or you're going to get burned again. And he's going to put an end to the Starks experiment next week in Seattle. We had the Swerve interview setting the match with Wheeler Yuta for, uh, for Friday. Then we had the Elite versus the Death Triangle. Match six of the best of seven. And, uh, of course, uh, the Elite had to win or it was over. And they did. And that was very clever because it was a false count anywhere match. So the first half of the match, they're brawling all over the backstage area. They're doing stuff backstage in hallways, etc. Finally, they work their way down to the ring. And big move. Dive. Awesome spots. Kickouts. The place is going crazy. And finally, there at the end, uh, Matt ends up locked in the Brutalizer. There is no escape. And he's suffering 
and his hand, he's getting ready to tap. But as that's happening, because it is a Falls Count Anywhere match, Kenny Omega grabs Phoenix, hits him with the one-winged angel off the stage through a table. A referee outside the ring counts three, and after the pinfall, Matt taps. And so, of course, Pac thinks he's won, but it's too late, dude. The other guy, your partner, got pinned. And so he's furious. The Elite have tied it up, and we are going into the final match of the best of seven coming up in a couple of weeks. Very clever finish. And my God... All these matches, if you watch all the craziness in this match and you watch, it, watch how hard like Brian Danielson and, and uh, Ethan Page were working and really everybody on the show, this was a show in Denver, a mile high. So uh, apparently it wasn't as bad as people thought it was going to be, but air was still thin. We had a great acclaimed music video, and uh, apparently I hear Karen Jarrett wasn't too happy about this. That should tell you all you need to know. But man, I watched this. This was awesome. And I watched it like three times. And when it was over, all I could think was, there needs to be a rebuttal from Sanjay, from MC Dutt and his crew. Or maybe even a battle rap coming up on Dynamite with these two teams. That's where this needs to go. And you know it, Mike. Don't shake your head at me. You know that's where this needs to go. We had Anna no, J and Ty. Leave it, leave yes, it right it where it is. Yes, it does. No. <laughs> you're, you're a horrible person and a bad booker. Oh, God. Anna J and Ty Mello versus Ruby Soho and Willow Nightingale. Turned into a pretty fun match. There were a couple of spots where, you know, it looked like people didn't know where they were supposed to be, but overall it was good. And uh, in the end, uh, there was a chair shot behind the referee's back. Uh, it was a kick into a chair onto Ruby Soho. Ty hit her, hit the tie KO, the nose-breaking tie KO, and pinned her. So they got a win here. Can I and ask you a question? Yes. Okay. Sammy and Ty have been booked for a couple of AAA matches. That Not anymore. They, well, that's the whole thing, and they were, they were stripped in the storyline. Do you know if this was something that, Triple A has known in advance for these things, and they decided to go ahead and keep advertising them. Or what exactly were they called and summoned for TV because they had to have Ty on TV? I actually don't know, but because of the relationship with uh, with Tony and, and Triple A, I don't think that uh, you know this was scheduled in advance and he pulled them. You know, my guess it was it was. I don't know. I shouldn't say anything, but. Uh... Just because it was the second time, and in storyline, they actually had a replacement to come up with number one contenders for those that mixed t- title. And then, obviously, they did, never stopped advertising them last night, even though we knew days in advance that Ty was going to be showing up, teaming up with uh, with uh, Anna Jay. I'll see if I can find out what happened. Thanks. But I can't do it now because I'm doing this report. Yeah, you are. Do it. Keep up with it. Let's go. Ricky Starks does a promo. He vows to beat Chris Jericho next week in Seattle, Washington. My hometown. I'll be there. I'll be there for that historic moment. And in the main event was uh, the king of television. The king of television, Samoa Joe versus Wardlow for that TNT title. So earlier in the show, Wardlow's doing an interview. And Samoa Joe jumps him and he hits him in the knee with a pipe. Now, uh, hate to break kayfabe here, everybody, but, and this is not like a hard and fast rule, but in general, you always attack the left leg in pro wrestling. You work the left side. Well, uh, uh, Joe hit the right knee of Wardlow. So Wardlow comes out selling the right knee, but because Joe's been doing this for so long, there were multiple spots where he attacked the left knee, which is not the right knee. But what can you do? Which, by the way, remember that uh, match I had with uh, Marco Stunt? I had, a, I had a feud with that little idiot and his yes. stupid family. Uh-huh. Well, uh, we did a uh, hardcore match, which is up available on, uh, I think it's on YouTube right now if you want to go watch it. I think you should because I beat the hell out of his father. <laughs> glorious but anyway so the finish was going to be i was going to go up for a big moonsault i was going to miss the moonsault and put myself through a table with the moonsault and i was going to sell my left leg i think it was and then he was going to put me in a figure four for the submission that was the plan 
And I don't know why it was so important to sell my left leg. I guess because of the way he was putting the figure four on, it was going to attack the left leg or whatever. So uh, I go for this big moonsault through the table, and uh, I landed right on my right knee hard. And it hurts so bad. So if you watch the match, I do this moonsault. I go through the table. I immediately grab my right leg because it hurts. Then I grab my other leg because that's the one I'm supposed to grab. So I'm literally grabbing at both legs. And then he put on a figure four and I submitted. God. That match was fake, by the way. <laughs> Just I, so I, you all I, know. I, I it was a work. I wish you would have wrapped that entire thing in... Uh, uh, in kayfabe, just like uh, just like Max did, that would have been great. Well, anyway, old Wardlow is all hurting, and they do this match, and he, this, this crowd was super into this match. It was a long Wardlow match, and Samoa Joe's awesome, so they ended up having a real good main event. And uh, finally, Wardlow hits the uh, Undertaker. You know when Undertaker had to powerbomb those big guys, last ride, the big dudes? They would always, you're doing near fall, big spot, boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, the guy starts punching you in the corner. You always knew something bad was going to happen to that guy. So Wardlow goes up underneath him. He hits one powerbomb. Goes for the powerbomb symphony, but the leg gives, gives out. And then uh, Joe puts him in the choke, and he chokes him unconscious. Wardlow out, loses the match. And then afterwards, Joe goes under the ring and he gets a box. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but at all wrestling shows, there is always a box full of hair-cutting accoutrements under the ring. You never know when you might need to cut somebody's hair. And uh, he gets a pair of scissors out of it, and uh, and he cuts off Wardlow's ponytail. This this crowd just, they're screaming when he cuts off the ponytail. And then who should run down afterwards and hit him with a skateboard but Darby Allen? Because, in fact, this coming Wednesday, in Darby's hometown of Seattle, Washington, I believe he will be challenging Joe for the TNT title. And, man, I think that'd be a, that'd be a hell of a thing if he won that belt in his hometown. So, anyway, that was the show. Big thumbs up to Dynamite this week. I thought it was great. I did as well too, and uh, I kind of like the Blackpool Combat Club's uh, ambiguity or uh, ambiguity, whatever the word is. Uh, I'm trying ambiguity. To think of it. Ambiguity. Thank you very much. I like it, and I like Claudio with the the look that he had on his face after he hit that huge uppercut, and he was staring down at him. And look, Brian Danielson is still hearkening back to William Regal, and we know what kind of character he's been throughout the start of his uh, beginnings here in AEW, playing both sides a little bit. So them as the shade of gray badasses, I kind of like that. You don't have to call attention to it, but whether it be a good guy or a bad guy, I'd like to see these guys punch other people in the face and stretch them, and I think that's a good thing to have. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle a load? <laughs> and Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. It's Russell Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's, he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh. Bye. I've never... I have... If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.